it, it's the thing's not going to be over until the dip buying finally ends until people get burned too many times and it'll happen. It, you know, it always happens. So, um, so yeah, so I, uh, you know, it's not happening tonight, but it will happen. <laughs> Tesla is absurdly expensive considering that it technology wise, it really now has trailing edge electric cars. Uh, you know, Musk did not reinvest innovation money in, in Tesla. I mean, he's got the same products that are that are just aging now. You know, there's just a lot of blatant fraud that's gone on there. I mean, with his so eventually this stuff's going to catch up with him. But even if it doesn't, just the competitiveness of the auto industry is going to catch up with Tesla. And and that's what's going to happen. Their, their self-driving is just garbage. Any expert can tell you that it's garbage. You can't do it just with cameras. OK, that's why everybody else uses LIDAR and radar. Eventually, the lawsuits and the regulators will will grind that down. I don't know, $17 a share, maybe. I mean, that's what that's what the damn thing is generously worth because it's not really growing much anymore. I mean, in today's video, we look inside the potentially empty mind of a long-term Tesla short seller who appears to not yet have learned his financially catastrophic lesson. The alternative title of today's video is How Not to Invest or Don't Be Mark. I'm not one typically to pick on people who are clearly suffering from mental illness, but if they're suffering from mental illness, talking about Tesla stock and people actually think they make sense, all bets are off. Sorry, Mark. Until his friends and or family can stage an intervention, best I can do is use Mark as a teaching tool. If you don't have time to watch the video, the lesson's pretty simple. When investing, make sure you leave your emotions at the door. And if your investment thesis at any point is disproven, and you're still making investment decisions on a now disproven investment thesis, it's time to reassess. And just a quick reminder, if you guys would like more content, check the links in the pinned comment. You can subscribe over on Twitter for exclusive content, loads of videos, and early access to my daily YouTube uploads. Plus, you can join Patreon. There's over 300 videos in the archive and plenty more still in the pipeline. Let's get into it. Yesterday in Tesla, it was down a lot. This morning, it was down a lot. Then it came back and to being up a few bucks. But, um, you know, it, that's just like this, this, these reflexive dip buyers come in because they've been doing it for so long and, and getting away with it. But those people all got destroyed when the, when the internet bubble, you know, ground down. Now, I remember those days and, you know, they had their favorites. You know, companies you never heard of, but, you know, CMGI or whatever. And or even even Amazon at one point, Amazon was down. You might not know it. Amazon was down at one point. Ninety five percent Internet era peak to its trough. But anyway, so, you know, these people would come in and, oh, it's down 10 percent. It must be a bargain. So they buy it and it would pop two percent and then drop another 10 percent. So, you know, these people need to just sort of be be wrung out of the system, the dip buying it, it's the thing's not going to be over until the dip buying finally ends until people get burned too many times and it'll happen. It, you know, it always happens. So, um, so yeah, so I, you know, it's not happening tonight, but it will happen. <laughs> <laughs> it'll happen. <laughs> Eventually. <laughs> now, look, I don't want to be too mean to Mark here. He's clearly suffering from mental illness and severely deluded. However, he's also continually given a platform and many investors, using the term loosely there, actually listen to what Mark's got to say and some of them even buy his BS. In this video, I want to do my best to use Mark as a lesson of how not to invest. For example, this is the same guy who back in 2014 wrote an article on Seeking Alfalfa under the absurdly ironic username of Logical Thought. I and mean, that's rich coming from the world's most emotional, least logical investor. The title, words to the effect of, why projections for Tesla to sell half a million vehicles in 2020 are absurd. Mark went on to logically reason in that article that no one's ever grown this fast before, therefore it's not going to happen. The end. Tesla did actually sell half a million vehicles in 2020, disproving Mark's thesis. This is the point where somebody with a brain would think, huh, I had a thesis. My thesis has now been disproven. Maybe I need to reassess and develop a new thesis as opposed to doubling down and continuing to overdose on hopium with the big side of copium as well. There are many valuable lessons here, key among them. When the facts change, so too should your thesis. Hope is not a strategy. And if one is overcome by emotions and unable to reason and think clearly, that is not a good time to be investing. I'm just kidding. Mark's a genius. His thesis wasn't disproven. He's always right. It's just not yet right, but eventually he's going to be right. <laughs> Tesla is absurdly expensive considering that it technology wise, it really now has trailing edge 
electric cars. For those of you who study body language and or watch police interrogation videos, you may be familiar with the very common fact it's not always true, so keep that in mind, but often when people are lying and they know they're lying, they will engage in self-soothing behaviours, typically touching their face, throat, ear, etc. For example, I might say something like, the competition is coming. And you might think, oh, that was a weird coincidence. Then I might say something like, Elon Musk is not trustworthy. And if this continues to occur, you might be able to tell that I'm saying things that I don't actually believe. Of course, that didn't happen there when Mark just suggested that Tesla is at the trailing edge when it comes to their electric vehicles, not the leading edge, the trailing edge. It's a coincidence that Mark touched his face then. He wasn't self-soothing. He wasn't lying. He doesn't know what he said was not true. It's just a total coincidence. I just thought I'd throw that out there randomly because it's got nothing to do with anything. In fact, let's watch that clip again just to prove that Mark wasn't actually saying something he didn't believe and wasn't self-soothing as he did so. Tesla is absurdly expensive considering that it technology-wise, it really now has trailing edge electric cars. And without going too far into the weeds, there are cars that charge faster, that have much nicer interiors, that have the same or better real world range. He, you know, because Musk, he started off with a great head start, but that doesn't mean anything in the auto business. I mean, every single thing in, in your car that you have today was somebody's exclusive, you know, option for, for about four years until the cycle came through and everybody else had it, you know, automatic transmissions, air conditioning, uh, a radio, you know, power steering, power brakes, airbags, you know, stuff that, that you, especially at your age, just take for granted. And really, they, I, I do too, because other than airbags, I grew up with all those things also. But at some point, nobody had them. And the first guy who had power steering was like, oh, get your wife this car with power steering. And it was probably very a big hit. And then in four years, everybody, ever, that's the way the auto business works. And this is no different. And especially in this case, uh, you know, Musk did not reinvest innovation money in, in Tesla. I mean, he's got the same products that are, that are just aging now. So if I'm interpreting Mark's hallucination, I mean, opinion correctly, I believe his opinion is that Tesla didn't reinvest in new technology. Their products haven't improved at all in the last, what, four odd years. And if you disagree with me and... Maybe you've seen that the Model Y is the best-selling vehicle on Earth in the first quarter of this year. Obviously, you're the deluded person. Duh. Now, again, I really do want to use this video as a teaching tool. So maybe you've heard a quote, maybe you haven't. This is an important one. Shout out to Richard Feynman, one of my idols. Just remember that you are the easiest person to fool. I don't know why I mentioned that quote. Not relevant at all to today's video. Moving on. So, you know, yeah, it's expensive. But then also... You know, there's just a lot of blatant fraud that's gone on there. I mean, with his... Here's another quote. I didn't realize I'd be dropping so many quotes today. Extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence, which is why I believe in God. Moving on. If you're going to come out and claim that a company has been committing fraud, you'd hope you've got some evidence because generally speaking now, they're not perfect, but the justice system around the world is generally not too bad. Sometimes it can be a little bit slow, I, I admit. But it's a pretty bold claim that one of the world's most valuable companies has been blatantly committing fraud in broad daylight. Fraud's so obvious that somebody like Mark, who can't even see inside the company, knows it's been going on. Yet there's been no investigations, let alone any criminal charges. Of course, a more cynical person might suggest that Mark is inventing reasons for why he's still short Tesla stock against all evidence to the contrary. But of course, Mark's thinking very clearly. He isn't deluded and has a really solid thesis. So we'll give him a pass on this one. Definitely, Tesla is committing fraud. It's just they haven't been caught yet. But eventually, eventually, they are going to get caught for all the fraud they've been committing out in broad daylight that no one's picked up on yet, as opposed to companies like Nikola, who were actually committing fraud and did actually get caught, and the founder's going to be on trial soon and, and enjoying a long sentence in prison. Don't drop the soap, Trevor. So-called full self-driving program. It's been proven that he used a fake you know, video um, segment to, to market that thing and and the solar tiles, it's been proven that when he showed them, they were actually fake. And so eventually the stuff's going to catch up with them. But even if it doesn't, just the competitiveness of the auto industry is going to catch up with Tesla. And, and that's what's going to happen. So let's discuss Mark's logic. There's logical thought in that argument. Apparently, Tesla's been committing fraud. Some solar tiles they demoed, demoing a new technology, apparently were not functioning. I don't know. Okay, cool story. I don't know if that's been proven or not. It doesn't really sound like fraud. Fraud's kind of like lying about revenue, like, huh? 
But then in the same breath, Mark goes on to say, but even if they don't get caught, that doesn't add up. If they've been committing fraud, Mark, it's legitimate fraud, they'll get caught, especially if you know about it. Surely you've told the authorities about this fraud. It's going to catch up to them eventually, right? <laughs> More hopium. But even if it doesn't, the competitiveness... Now, this was recorded in February, I believe. I checked the date on the original source video. By the way, link in description. Check it out if you want to see the full interview. I mean, is this guy for real? Ford recently announced a partnership with Tesla. The supposedly competitive automotive industry, one of the big players in the US, has been outcompeted by Tesla on charging infrastructure and just given up. CEOs of companies like Ford are admitting that Tesla's way ahead. They're learning from Tesla. Tesla's a much better cost structure. This is counter evidence to Mark's claim. The fact that Tesla themselves are making two to three times more profit than most other automotive manufacturers per vehicle sold seems to suggest that it is Tesla out competing the supposedly competitive automotive industry. But, uh, Apparently, this, this doesn't align with Mark's worldview, therefore, it's not true. So, apparently, Tesla's been committing fraud, and that'll eventually catch up to them. But even if it doesn't, then the automotive industry is going to outcompete Tesla. The same automotive industry that's admitting right now that Tesla's outcompeting them, and they're trying to catch up, and they might not even be able to. Talk about some logical thought. Yeah, it's interesting. So, you don't really put any value on, I guess, there's the, the AI technology, the self-driving. There's also their... Come um, on, it's nonsense. The AI guy... <laughs> I mean, the... the their, their self-driving is just garbage. Any expert can tell you that it's garbage. You can't do it just with cameras, okay? That's why everybody else uses LiDAR and radar. This is what happens when your IQ is 103 and you think it's 163. You claim that Tesla's technology is garbage, their FSD, which is incredible real-world AI. Ask an expert in the industry, not the supposed experts that Mark's deferring to, but actual experts who understand neural networks, computer vision, the importance of data, or anyone who's actually been in one of these vehicles and has a brain capable of comprehending what's going on. Again, I don't want to sound too obnoxious here, but there is a certain intelligence threshold where somebody might see a Tesla FSD beta and not understand what's going on or how profound it is. Not sure if Mark falls into that camp. But do you notice the emotive language? It's garbage. Garbage. Really, garbage. And Mark's reasoning on that isn't because it's not capable of incredible feats in the real world like intervention-free drives, especially in many parts of California and now in Texas as well, where people are driving point A to point B and not even needing to intervene. That's garbage. Why? Because according to Mark, Tesla doesn't have LiDAR and therefore they'll never solve full autonomy and therefore what they've already created is garbage and we can dismiss it. By the way, can somebody remind me to check back in this video in a couple of years' time? I'm expecting the first Tesla RoboTaxi fair to take place somewhere on Earth late 2024. Might be a little bit later than that. Could be 25 or 26 in the worst case, but... um. I look forward to seeing how well this garbage technology continues to function without the need for LiDAR in the future. And Musk is stuck there too. He doesn't want to spend the money for LiDAR. Supposedly, he's got this new hardware coming out that'll have radar. But then guess what? You have what? You know, 3 million cars on the road that you swore were full self-driving capable, but they don't have radar. Or maybe it's 2 million because he had radar for a while and then he pulled it out apparently to save money or because of the supply chain problems or whatever. So... Yeah, I mean, the whole thing is just a nonsensical promotion. And eventually the lawsuits and the regulators will will grind that down. There's that word again. Eventually, the hopium is strong with this one. But in the meantime, you know, go, go look at the dashboard or, or the interior of a, of a Hyundai, you know, Ionic 5 or the new Ionic 6 or the, the its twin, the Kia EV6 or, you know, even a, a, a Ford Mustang Mach-E. You know, or in the higher end cars, the Mercedes, you know, EQS electric or the EQE electric or, you know, the Porsche Taycan. I mean, you can't even compare them. That's why Tesla or even the even in China, the the newer, more innovative homegrown Chinese cars like BYD just came out with some higher end cars and the Neos and the x -Pang. I mean, Tesla just looks like garbage next to those cars, which is why it's losing market share everywhere and that's why he had to slash prices to the point where you know the profits are going to be severely compromised those those margins everyone used to brag about they don't exist anymore when you slash prices the way tesla has in the last few months you know i'm sure there is a very 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 small minority of car buyers who care more about what the dash of the vehicle looks like than the features the functionality the software the safety the performance the convenience some they might exist, but after Mark has dismissed Tesla's FSD software as garbage, claimed the company commits fraud, he's now pointing to Tesla's supposed weakness in terms of the interior of their vehicles versus some of the so-called competition, and that's the reason why the competition's coming, and that's why Tesla's in trouble. No mention of the battery technology, the experience manufacturing EVs at scale, 
By the way, they're still making two to three times more than any other automotive manufacturers per vehicle sold, despite the price cuts. Is it just me or is he really grasping at straws here? Talking about the dash. Let's move on. Yeah, well, he's, got, he's done pretty well, uh, pretty good at uh, extracting value out of the company. Anyway, so well, yeah, he's, certainly, he's done good at, at lining his wallet, but he also did, did well at, at annihilating, you know, whatever, $30 billion worth of worth of equity value in, in Twitter. So, you know, so what, you know, the Lord gave it with one hand and took it with the other or something, you know? So, yeah. Yeah, very true. So, so what would you say is your uh, target price for, for Tesla? I mean, you know, Tesla, you know, BMW sells two and a half million cars a year. Okay. Um, at very good margins, better margins than Tesla is going to have this year. And from now on, because of the way it slashed prices, Tesla, its own guidance said it would sell 1.8 million cars this year, you know, and he said, well, maybe 2 million. It's starting to not look that way based on this quarter. But even if he sold, you know, 2 million cars, what is that? 80% of the size of BMW, which sells two and a half. So, you know, last I looked, BMW was around 60 billion euros or something. I mean, if you put 80% of that on Tesla, it'd be 48 billion euros, which is what about, I don't know, 52 or 53 billion dollars. And it's got it's got 3.2 billion shares outstanding. So you're looking at, I don't know, $17 a share, maybe. I mean, that's what that's what the damn thing is generously worth. Because it's not really growing much anymore. I mean You heard it here first, folks. Tesla is not really growing much anymore, said moments after Mark admits that Tesla's on track to do 1.8, maybe 2 million vehicles this year. The same guy who wrote an article years ago saying in 2020, there's no chance Tesla's doing half a million vehicles. They're now about four times that figure that they'd never get to and still growing at an insane rate, yet apparently they're not really growing anymore. It's really hard to take this guy seriously. In fact, it's not hard. It's actually impossible because nothing he says makes any sense. And remember, the easiest person to fool is yourselves. This guy is not a special case. Think for a moment. Are there any areas in your own life where you're fooling yourself? One example might be, oh, I'm not that out of shape because all your friends are fat motherfuckers as well, which might be true. Relatively speaking, you may not be that fat compared to all your fat motherfucking friends. Any fat motherfuckers right now who lie to themselves, oh, I'm not really that overweight when you are. Just a random example I thought I'd pull out because I know that that's going to apply to a lot of people watching. Not against Q4. You know, you can take the beginning of last year when it was still growing quickly, but that's not happening now. So, you know, $17, $18 a share versus, you know, $202 right now. That's a hell of a lot of downside, right? That's over 90% downside. I think we're going to see that. Yeah, it's crazy to think. So are there any other companies that you're watching that you think are at uh, exuberant prices that you wouldn't go Well, to? there's a lot, but they're, they're, I'm not short any other specific companies. I'm short a lot of SPY, a lot of the S&P 500, just to eliminate you know, specific company short risk, you know? Um, and then I'm long some of those autos, but we're, as which I mentioned. You did hear correctly, Mark is simultaneously short Tesla stock. By the way, Tesla stock down half price from its recent all-time highs. Could have made a killing and said, finally, I made some money on this short and given up, tapped out and exited the position, but he's still short Tesla. And at the same time as being short Tesla, simultaneously long some legacy automotive manufacturers. I hope Mark's butthole is ready for impact. This ain't going to be fun. But we're very, overall, we're very net short right now, like hugely net short, mostly SPY. I mean, Tesla is a big short position for us, but SPY is even a much bigger short position and we're net short because of that. So um, yeah, I mean, I'm bearish, but look, I, I think you told me that you have a lot of sort of younger investors watching this. I do not recommend that anybody out there short stocks. It's very difficult to do. You get fierce rallies. You have to have a certain uh, mentality to deal with it. You know, a certain, a certain cold blooded confidence, let's call it. And even if you have it, it's, it's, you know, it's just, it's hard to make money shorting stocks. I mean, because over time stocks go up just because of inflation, right? When you short something, you're shorting it in, in nominal terms and in nominal terms over time, things go up. I've got to give credit to Mark here. I agree, especially for younger investors. I don't mean young in age, but young in experience. Shorting stocks is extremely high risk. You have unlimited potential losses. And he's right, you are betting against inflation itself. Even if a stock goes nowhere, but there's underlying inflation, it's gonna tick higher. You're betting against history. You're betting against a long-term trend and you have unlimited risk. So credit where it's due. At least Mark is recognizing that 
do as I say, not as I do. Might be the most reasonable thing Mark has ever said. Actually, I don't know what he said about anything other than Tesla. So he might be very reasonable outside of this little world of delusion. I don't know. But I do still think he needs some help. Anyone know Mark? Time to stage an intervention, I think. You know, I feel we have a window here, which is why I'm very short, the sort of window where things got very expensive and yet central banks are, are running tight money. And I think things are co going to come in a lot. But overall, my advice to anybody right now is, you know, maybe go to cash, you know, um, it, take advantage of that 5%, you know, T-bill for six months and, and see what things look like then, because I do think things will be a lot lower. Don't be so quick you know, to jump in. I mean, if something is cheap on an absolute basis, then by all means buy it. Because look, I could be wrong. Maybe, maybe we are starting a new bull market, you know, and if I'm wrong, you know, so, you know, that's why I'm long, you know, Stellantis at whatever, two and a half times free cash flow, two and a half times earnings. That's why I'm long Volkswagen for the reason I described. I mean, it's so damn cheap that, yeah, it could go lower, but if it goes lower, I'm just going to buy more. Did you guys notice that or was it just me? Mark, when talking about being short, literally said words to the effect of, I could be wrong and if I'm wrong, and then he just completely moved on and didn't acknowledge the third degree financial burns, he will suffer if he's short and he's wrong. Was that a defense mechanism? Just don't think about the potential risk? You know, somewhat sustainable. I mean, look, auto companies are not going to make this year what they made last year because, you know, last year they could have all sold 20% more cars than they did. They just couldn't get the inventory because of the supply chain issues. That's resolving. They'll probably have to start slapping some more incentives on the cars. <clears throat> and, and, you know, so they'll learn probably less this year. So, you know, maybe something that was two and a half times last year's earnings will be four times this year's earnings at the current price. I mean, they're still so damn cheap. They're priced... Part of it is they were priced to go out of business because all these people were like, oh, Tesla's going to put him out of business, you know, but. Oh, my God, this is so hard to watch. He knows deep down in his heart. He knows again. He's just said out loud. The reason these automotive companies are so dirt cheap, the stocks is because the market's pricing them to go out of business. Tesla is going to put them out of business. He recognizes why these stocks are so cheap. And as he's saying, Tesla's going to put them out of business. That's why they're so cheap. Another one of these. Yeah, definitely not self-soothing behavior there. Mark definitely believes that the market's wrong. It's wrong in thinking legacy automotive companies are going out of business and it'll be a result of the electric vehicle disruption. And it was a coincidence that he once again touched his face right as he was saying something super absurd about Tesla. Total coincidence. But let's watch that total coincidence again. And they're still so damn cheap. They're priced. Part of it is they were priced to go out of business because all these people were like, oh, Tesla's going to put them out of business, you know. But, you know, the fact is the new electric cars that GM has coming out this year are, are probably nicer than any Tesla. Somebody call an ambulance. This guy has overdosed on copium. The supposed vehicles that GM have yet to release, but are coming because they told us that they're going to come. There's a plan. They put some computer renderings on their website. Therefore, they're definitely going to exist and it will happen this year. Are probably going to be nicer than any Tesla. What? All oh, right. That's right. He's just fooling himself again. For a minute there, I was trying to figure out why he said that, but then I realized the only reason he's saying that is to make himself feel better about being short Tesla stock. This is the strength of this guy's investment thesis. He's risking financial ruin. He's short Tesla stock. And another pillar of his investment thesis is the cars that another supposed automotive manufacturer has told people will be coming out this year are probably going to be nicer than Tesla. Not more profitable, won't sell more, not safer, not better tech. No, no, no. Nicer and probably Meanwhile, Tesla's Model Y, literally the world's best-selling car in Q1 of this year. Just putting that out there again. Don't know why I did that. It's totally not relevant to what Mark was saying. For sure, the stuff that Porsche and Audi makes, you know, are, are, are nicer than any Tesla, you know. So Mercedes, same deal. The Koreans, same deal. I would have loved to have bought, actually, because I saw what was happening with the electric cars from, from Hyundai, you know, the Kias and the, and the, um, and the Hyundai Ionics. I would have loved to have bought that stock. It was dirt cheap. It might still be, but it's really, really hard to buy a Korean stock. You actually have to have an account with a local Korean broker, I think, in order to do it, at least from the US. And, you know, that was just too much to set up for just to just own one stock. But, you know, I would have bought that one too. I mean, none of these companies are going to get put out of business by Tesla. Tesla is the one slashing prices, you know, in order to try to keep up the the growth story, even though they're going to have earnings contraction significantly this year, because they're not, there's no way they're selling enough extra cars to make up for those price cuts. So, um, yeah, so that's, 
that's 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 how I'm positioned. Yeah, I think there's. Um, I know someone actually bought a Tesla. I think last week, and they're picking it up this week as well. So it's uh, a bit bit different to the eighteen month wait time. Well, that's you can it. get it right away in in most of the world, and again, the prices are so much lower. I mean, they've gone down market. It's no longer uh, a cool person's <clears throat> luxury good. I mean, if you're buying a Tesla today, you are not cool. You just think you're cool. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> the cool people are moving on. They're buying other EVs. Actually, one of my favorite EVs that I've driven, and it just never really caught on, is is the um, the Jaguar I Pace, which um, which I think looks terrific and it drives really well. I drove it. I mean, I'm I'm not generally an EV fan just because they're heavy and also they're a pain in the ass on a long trip. But but um, but I love the I Pace. I mean, if I had to have an EV, although. You know, technologically, it's a little bit behind because it doesn't charge as fast. And, you know, the range is sort of mediocre, but it, it is pretty cool. But, you know, there's just there's just so much stuff coming out now, which is which, again, is just nicer than any time. That's why he had to slash the prices, because he knew it. So. So key lessons. One, Mark should probably take his own advice about not shorting stocks. Two, when it comes to investing, emotions should never enter the picture. Leave your emotions at the door before making any investment decisions, lest you be Mark. In fact, another key takeaway is just don't be Mark. And if you're needing to invent reasons, claim fraud. Start talking about the incredible dashboards of Tesla's so-called competition or future vehicles that have been announced by companies like GM that'll probably be better than or nicer than a Tesla. You may be out on a limb. The most important of all, if your investment thesis is disproven, like Mark's was in his well-known seeking Alpha Alpha article claiming Tesla would never sell half a million vehicles per year in 2020, and they did, it's time to reassess. Of course, that would require some self-awareness. If only Mark could sharpen up his brain a little bit, have enough energy to actually think through his Tesla investment thesis and realize there is no foundation under any of the pillars supporting Mark's supposed investment thesis on why he short Tesla stock. I mean, hey, if Mark can afford it, if he hasn't lost all of his money shorting Tesla stock, might I suggest AG1? might help him think and see things a little bit more clearly and stop losing so much money. Athletic Greens AG1 has given me a massive, meaningful boost in energy, allowing me to do a lot more every day, including using my brain more and using my body more. I highly recommend you guys and girls check it out. Athletic Greens AG1 is an excellent way to fill in nutritional gaps. It's got 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, and whole food source nutrients, plus prebiotics and probiotics and digestive enzymes and adaptogens to help you deal with stress. Plus, if you click the link in the pinned comment or head to athleticgreens.com slash SMR, you can get yourself a one-year free supply of vitamin D3 and K2. But don't take my word for it. Here's what some of you guys and girls have to say. AG1 has changed my life. I was, as you described, treating myself like a circus. I ate like trash, rarely exercised, used alcohol as a stress crutch, cannabis also. AG1 is what gave me the kick in the ass, got me back to the gym, motivated me to do more for myself, family, my business, etc. Keep doing what you do. Now, I know there's some skeptics, the same kind of people who think Elon Musk is a fraud reading this going, what do you thought? There's no way that's possible, bro. It must be a placebo effect. Believe it or not, this is a recurring theme. If you give your body everything it needs to feel and perform its best, including having a lot more energy, you'll need ways to use that energy. For me personally, that includes more exercise, moving my body more, more social activity, and more cognitively demanding tasks, including producing a f ton of exclusive content over on Twitter and on Patreon, plus my daily YouTube uploads. The proof's in the pudding. On to another testimonial from a viewer of this channel. SMR, you asked me to provide feedback on AG1. Here it is. It has helped with mental acuity, stamina, and intestinal waste management. <laughs> uh, can't read between the lines. It certainly helps with regularity and digestion. That's what the digestive enzymes are for. It has also dramatically reduced my cravings for sugar. You guys need to stop eating sugar. It's fucking poison. I'm 50, 5'9", and overweight, aka a fat motherfucker. I think that's a technical term for overweight, isn't it? Is it fat motherfucker or obese? I can't remember. I average 100 hours a week in the West Texas oil fields as a safety supervisor. Jesus Christ, dude. No wonder you're struggling to keep your weight under control. 100 hours a week. Brutal. It has helped me lose weight. It is not an appetite suppressant. It can help fat people suppress cravings and motivation to be healthier is critical for changing your diet. Love you, brother. Again, this is a great point. It's something people really don't seem to grasp. If you have more energy, everything becomes easier. It's like turning on easy mode for life. A few years ago, before I was taking AG1, my health was trash. I was struggling to get through the day, had afternoon fatigue. The last thing I wanted to do was either use my brain or move my body. Didn't have the energy. Now, my biggest struggle every day is figuring out ways to use that energy. I'm exercising way more, doing a lot more with my friends and family, and of course, my work output has increased substantially. And you can fact check me. Check out the average length of my videos I was posting to YouTube three years ago. Need I say more? And one final testimonial. Love this one. 
Okay, here's the deal for me with this AG1 shit. I'm 41 years old and not the type to eat, drink, smoke or sleep healthy, so I was skeptical. That being said, here's what I experienced. Day one, meh. Day two, afternoon fatigue was about 45 minutes late. Day three, zero afternoon fatigue. Day four, zero afternoon fatigue plus extra energy. Day five, again, zero afternoon fatigue plus energy. Wondering, what the f*** really? See, this is the thing, right? The results for many people are just almost too good to be true. This, this is the same experience I had. My afternoon fatigue just vanished out of nowhere. I'm like, wait, what the f***? Why am I not tired in the afternoons anymore? Surely, it's not that AG1 shit, is it? Turns out it was. Day six and seven, same thing. Day eight, same thing. Plus, I had the want to get things done around the house that I normally would slack off and not get done. Again, the point, extra energy, you'll need to use it, you'll find ways to use it. Day 9, 10, and 11, and today is day 12. I f***ing love it. So however you managed to get me to buy it, I'm so glad you did. Thank you so much, SMR. It really changed me so far. Guys, this shit really works. Just try it. By the way, this is the reason I continue to relentlessly promote AG1. A lot of people get real f***ing mad in the comments. Oh my god, Snake Oil Salmon sold out. Oh my god, he's a scammer. This is fraud. But Constantly... I'm pretty sure everyone making these comments is also currently short Tesla stock. I'm not particularly concerned about people having a negative perception, those folks suffering from small brain syndrome, still living in my bum's basement syndrome, etc., writing mean comments, claiming AG1's a scam or it doesn't work. I mean, bro, when I get feedback like this, this is what keeps me going. And remember, there is a 90-day money-back guarantee. There's nothing to lose here. Just try this stuff for a month, and if you don't get these results, get your money back. See, it's a literal no-brainer. It's an IQ test at this point in time. Testimonial after testimonial after testimonial like this. Get your money back if it doesn't work. Just try it for a month and if it doesn't work, get your money back. Today's the day. It's finally time. Be like this guy who was a massive skeptic, but finally, after a thousand promotions in a row, caved in, tried AG1 and has results like this. Head to athleticgreens.com slash SMR or click the link at the pinned comment and please let me know how you're feeling in a few weeks time. But now, if you'll excuse me, time to put my extra energy to good use. I'll be recording some more exclusive content for Patreon and my Twitter subscribers. So click the links at the pinned comment. See you over on Twitter and or Patreon. And don't forget to grab your AG1. Love ya.